Seven Minneapolis police officers have quit as the future of the city's entire police department is uncertain after the death of George Floyd. It is unclear if their leaving has anything to do directly with Floyd. The department said a statement to Minneapolis radio station WCCO saying people seek to leave unemployment to leave people seek to leave employment for a myriad of reasons. But several officers have told the Minneapolis Star Tribune newspaper that they are upset by the mayor's decision to abandon the city's third precinct during the Floyd protests two weeks ago. All 12 city council members said in a resolution last week they intend to dismantle the city's police department and replace it with a, what they call a transformative new model for cultivating safety, end quote, in the city, the details of which are unclear. 14 police officers who say they're speaking for the hundreds in the Department of Officers have written an open letter to the people of Minneapolis condemning the policeman Derek Chauvin, who kept his knee on George Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes on Memorial Day, which, which allegedly contributed to Joe, uh, Floyd's death. Derek Chauvin failed as a human and stripped George Floyd of his dignity in life. The letter reads, it continues, this is not who we are. And once again, that's a letter written by 14 Minneapolis police officers to the people of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Chauvin has been charged with second degree murder and three other officers have been charged with aiding and abetting. In Seattle, Police Chief Carmen Best says she hopes officers can move back into a section of the city taken over by peaceful protesters without resorting to what she called something that devolves into a force situation. Chief Best appeared on CBS television's Face the Nation on Sunday. From Washington, D.C., you're listening to VOA News. Atlanta police have fired the white officer who shot and killed a black man Friday night after the suspect apparently grabbed the officer's taser and tried to escape. The department has also placed a second officer on administrative leave. On Saturday, Atlanta Police Chief Erica Shields resigned over the incident. Saturday night saw protests and a fire at the Wendy's fast food restaurant where the incident took place. Protesters continued to surround the restaurant on Sunday. Police dash and body cam video shows 27-year-old Ray Shard Brooks asleep in his car Friday night, blocking the drive through lane of the Wendy's drive through After failing a breathalyzer test, Brooks apparently struggled with the police officers, grabbed a taser, and attempted to flee. Officer Garrett Rolfe apparently fired his gun at least three times, and Brooks fell to the ground. He was pronounced dead at a hospital. Brazil has moved past Britain to become the country with the second highest COVID-19 death toll in the world, just after the United States. The South American country's death tally early Sunday was 42,720, according to Johns Hopkins University. Britain has lost 41,747 people to COVID-19. The United States has lost 115,436 lives to the coronavirus pandemic. Johns Hopkins reports the number of coronavirus cases around the world is steadily climbing toward the 8 million mark. The U.S. has more than 2 million cases. Brazil has 850,000 infections and Russia has the third highest number of cases in the world with more than 519,000. Reuters is reporting Egypt will reopen at all of its airports for scheduled international traffic on July 1st. That's according to the civil aviation minister on Sunday after suspending regular commercial flights in March because of the coronavirus outbreak. Foreign tourism is to be limited to resorts in three coastal provinces. The government said on Thursday it will reopen Egypt's main seaside resorts for international flights and foreign tourists from July 1st. White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow said Sunday that the U.S. economy, the world's largest, is, in his words, now in a recovery stage from the debilitating effects of the coronavirus pandemic that closed thousands of businesses, even as forecasters say unemployment figures will remain high for months. Kudlow told CNN on Sunday, I think we are on our way back. 2021 is going to be a solid, solid year. He indicated the $600 a week unemployment compensation supplement the federal government had been paying more than 40 million unemployed workers in addition to state jobless benefits is likely to end as scheduled at the end of July. Via remote, I'm Marissa.